Hey everyone, I'm so sorry about that. I have no idea what happened, but somehow I kind of lost you guys. It was I was over here ranting and raving and I don't know what happened, so I'm really, really sorry. Let me start over. Um, obviously this is episode 148. I want to talk to you about parenting today. I did wrap up, you know, my off day and it was pretty good. I mean, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened, but I completely lost you guys. Um, what was I saying? Basically, I was off. Dropped baby girl off at school, came back home, and just got to work on things I needed to clear up before the end of the year. I don't want any 2017 problems in 2018. I want to be, you know, clean slate, ready to go, start a new chapter on the business. So, basically, I started off with laundry. Because <laughs> I had three loads of laundry to do. And washed, dried, folded, put away, everything is like, you know, sorted out. Everything's where it should be. Um... I do better when there's less clutter in my life, and if there's like a pile of work looming in front of me, if I don't tackle one thing or another, it'll just sit there and, and accumulate and bug me, and I won't be able to concentrate anyway, so I got that knocked out. Um, <laughs> and let's see, I definitely loaded all of my podcast episodes onto YouTube because that's the next project. I want everything on there so that from now on, when I, you know, my I do each episode, I can go ahead and upload to SoundCloud and YouTube, and then wherever you are, whatever platform is more comfortable for you, you have it accessible. All right. Um, so I got all of that done. It's not all um, marked as public yet. I'm still working on a couple of the details, but the bulk of the, you know, the upload is done. It's just, you know, going through and making sure the details are correct on each episode. So that's done. Um, I think I mentioned that. I'm not a big fan of accounting. I don't like money. It just drives me nuts. And um, I'd rather not think about it if, if given a choice. But, you know, it's one of those things, right? So uh, what I had done originally, and I was working with uh, Vanessa on this, is um, working out like a spending journal to find out where my money goes because, honestly, if I don't write it down, I have no idea where the money goes. I have a general idea but I don't know the details. I don't know how much I spend on food and eating out and other unnecessary stuff. <laughs> and then at the end of the month, I wonder, like, why am I, why am I not able to save anything? So that's basically the gist of that whole process. And I went back to look at how much I had done. And I haven't done or entered anything since the end of April, which is ridiculous, to say the least. So what I ended up having to do was dig everything out of... Um, Archives, which the the banking system that's available online only has a record of the last six months. So right now I'm missing May and June, which I'll have to go into the bank and ask them for, which is not a problem, but it's just embarrassing. I should be better than this by now. I mean, yeah, I have no excuse. Anyway, so I worked on that today. I entered everything all the way from, from June all the way up until today. Everything is entered. I just need to go ahead and correspond or correlate the um, the receipts and make sure that I have exactly what was spent where. Um, I'm in the process of sorting out my business finances versus the personal finances because there will come a day where I actually do make money in my business. And in the event that I'm audited, I want to be able to say that, you know what, I've invested this much money in my business and this is how much I'm getting in return. And, you know, um, there's nothing underhanded about my books, basically. So that's ba that's the reason why I'm going back and clearing up all of these things. I'm trying to keep an account of everything so that, you know, um, not only do I know where the money goes, but I also can show people should they choose to, you know, check my books, whatever. So, yeah, got that done, was able to meet up with my cousin uh, who's been studying in, in Melbourne. This is the second time she came to hang out with me, and it was... It was pretty fun, actually. I got to teach her how to make parapunkita, which is basically dal and uh, and spinach. Um, it's a very down-home, traditional dish that we make in Sri Lanka. Um, it's pretty much a staple um, on my table whenever we have rice and curry. Um, I also made chicken curry, which she didn't know how to make the way we make it either, so I went ahead and taught her how I make it. And I make it pretty, you know, it's pretty foolproof the way I make it, I think. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see when she tries to make it herself and see if it turns out the way she wants it to. So that was ki kind of fun to be able to share uh, share with her. We, um, I think most of y'all know when I cook, I like to listen to music and sing along and dance along or whatever. It's, it's how I keep myself entertained in the kitchen. And it was kind of nice to share the kitchen with someone and to be able to sing with her 
and just, you know, just enjoy our time. It was, it was nice. It really was nice. I, I'd imagine as Guy 3 gets older, you know, this is something we would do together as well, like to spend time in the kitchen and to sing or talk or whatever it is, just to spend time in the kitchen. Anyway, that's my hope. Eventually it'll end up that way because she has no choice. I'm her mom. So that's what I want to talk to you about, right? Parenting. As you all know, I am super stressed out about school. She probably doesn't even feel it yet. Um, But I've been looking at uh, the tuition materials for primary one as far as our tuition center is concerned. Now, bear in mind, we are... We are geared towards high achievers. We specialize in A-star and A-1. Um, we basically guarantee it with the way that we actually teach. So I already know that being in the public school system in Singapore, you basically have no choice in what you learn, how you learn. They really do push you into becoming a robot. Um, the way you regurgitate the material and have to spit it back out word for word, I mean... I'm telling you, I know from personal experience only now because um, learning how to do the uh, the workshops, learning how to present um, on paper, so that when we do assessments for kids, we know if they're if they know what they're doing or not. So if it's like the model method, you have to draw the boxes, you have to you know write out everything. You cannot assume the teacher will infer that you know what you're doing. You have to write out everything. So if it says that, you know, this person had more marbles than that person, how many did they have, blah, 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 after they gave such and such away, whatever the stupid problem is, you have to write down every thought process. And it has to be per a certain format. It's like super irritating and it's against everything I stand for as a creative. <laughs> so it's really hard for me, okay? So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is I think that parents should realize the amount of creative license they have in curating the experience that is their child's life while they're with them. You've only got them for like 18 years, okay? And after that, they go to university. Maybe it's overseas. Maybe it's at home. Um, Maybe they join the army. Maybe, I don't know, whatever it is, you have them for a good 18 years. If you're lucky, you have them for longer than that where they live in the house with you. And in that time, it really is up to us to shape the future of the world through their eyes, through their experience. Um, as it is right now, if you were to come and sit down and talk to me and my daughter, um, you would be able to see how out of the box she thinks, how creatively she comes up with solutions for everyday problems. She really is an empath. I I don't know if it's because I'm an empath as well, or if she really feels as much as I do. Um, but if she were to see someone, um, and their their body language suddenly changes, their facial expression suddenly changes, she instinctively knows to go and nurture and help that person along. And that's something I love about her. And that's something I hope she never loses. But as I see these children come before me, you know, at the tuition center, and a lot of a lot of them gravitate towards me, we end up hanging out and talking and just trying to get their mind off of academics. It's just academics, academics, academics all day long. And I see them and they... They are very intelligent. They are so capable. But there's more to life than school. And I feel like in Singapore, all these parents, all they do is put them in school, put them in tuition, put them in student care, put them in this, that, and the other. And it's like, when do you spend time with your child, man? Like, is tuition like the next level of babysitting? Like, when do you spend time with your child? Anyway... The reason I bring up parenting is because I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure that this child of mine has the best of both worlds. Yes, I want her to be very well educated. Yes, I want her to have the capacity to get any job she wants, to achieve anything she wants. But even then, I think there are certain key elements to um, being an effective human being that is not taught in schools here in Singapore. Um, You can't talk about, you know... Um, intuition. You can't talk about um, what is it? Muscle memory. You can't talk about things like that because the parents really don't understand. And and the reason I'm telling you this is because I've been trying to write ads for Singaporean parents in language that they can understand, and it is killing me. <laughs> it is killing my creativity. It's killing my level of English. I I I haven't had to dumb myself down like this in about 20 years. 
it hurts my feelings. It upsets me. But I kind of have no choice. I mean, this is the job I'm in. And it's okay. It's, I mean, it's an experience. I'm not saying that I hate it and I don't want to do it anymore. It's not that at all. I'm telling you that I acknowledge the fact that it, it goes against everything I stand for. But if this is what the parents are like in Singapore, then I, obviously with this job, that's what I need to do. The other thing that kind of upsets me is the fact that while Singapore claims to be very, very diverse, they are not doing anything as far as, I don't even know what they would do or how they would do it, but individually, people are racist here. Like, really? I was over here thinking that, you know, I left the U.S., it's no longer black, it's no longer white, it's no longer Hispanic. I get to be in like a melting pot of so many different cultures. And yes, there are many, many people that live here. They're very, very diverse. Everyone is married to everyone else. Like all the cultures are mixed up here in Singapore. And that's cool and everything, but there is still racism. And I know that for a fact because I see it in my daughter's class. It hurts her feelings. She comes back and tells me stories, and I'm like, what, are you serious? But I can't do anything about it. I am powerless to change them. The only person I can influence is my daughter at the moment. And I'm hoping I give her enough information so that she does not judge, but she's able to move about the world freely without fear of being compromised or being prejudiced against um I guess that's the best I could hope for. But in the meantime, I'm trying to cultivate this experience for her. I'm trying to cultivate the best childhood possible. I need her to see me struggle a little bit because then she knows as an adult that, yes, it's a, it's a little bit required of her. She's going to have to struggle. She's going to have to put in the work. Nothing is handed to you. You're going to have to put in the work step by step, every step of the way, every day, little by little. So I need her to see me struggle a little bit. I need her to see me capable of doing the dishes after I cook, after I clean the house, after I do, you know, laundry and spend time with her at the same time. Find time to do her hair. Make sure that she has a, a home-cooked meal every night. Those things I need her to see. Why? Because then she understands what I mean by being a mother. It's not enough to give birth, you guys. And that goes for fathers too. It's not enough to donate sperm. <laughs> It's all fun and games until someone gets pregnant, right? And then when they get pregnant and they have that child, suddenly it's someone's responsibility to make sure that that child grows up well. Now, a lot of these people here in Singapore, and I see it every day too, there are a lot of young women out here who are content to marry up, which means they're going to marry a foreigner thinking that they're going to take care of everything they would ever need, and all they got to do is look pretty and get their nails done. Are you kidding me? Look. I was never high maintenance like that. And I'm not saying I'm gorgeous or anything, but I think I look pretty decent. I haven't broken any mirrors yet. But I've been cheated on. A lot. So it doesn't matter how good a housewife you are. It doesn't matter how great you look. It doesn't matter how great you are in bed. If he's bored, he's bored. Make sense? So what I need her to see is there are options for you. To become self-sufficient. There are options for you to have the life that you want. You do not have to belittle your dreams in order to get a man or keep a man. That's not the way that works. The right man will want his dreams alongside your dreams. The right man will want you to succeed just like he wants to succeed. You will be there for each other. And I need her to see that. So right now, obviously, flying solo here, but... She needs to understand that, yes, it can be done by yourself, which is why it's important for you to learn how to be happy by yourself. If you are not whole by yourself, what can you possibly offer a relationship? Because in order to feel whole, what you will try and do then is take to fill whatever gaps you feel you have. Instead of embracing those cracks and crevices and understanding that that's a part of who you are and you love yourself no matter what, so first and foremost, I need to give her intellectual, I'm sorry, emotional intelligence. The intellect, yeah, they'll cultivate all of that. I need to keep her creative and I keep, need to keep her emotionally stable. That's my job as a parent. And I feel like there are so many ways to do that. And I'm, I'm pushing to make sure that I have the time to do those things. I don't want to be one of those parents that shoves them in every class possible 
so that they only come home to eat dinner and go to sleep. That's not the life I want for her. I want her to look back on her childhood and be able to tell me memories she had of us doing things together. Not existing in the same house, but doing things together. That's important to me. We moved around a lot as kids, and my mom did the best she could, but because she was by herself for the majority of the time, and she had three kids and bills to pay, she didn't have the time to play with us. She had to manage it all by herself. And yeah, as soon as we were old enough, we tried to help out a little bit too, but she just didn't have the time. She didn't have the support. So yeah, I may not have the the support, but I'm damn sure going to make sure I have the time somehow. By hook or by crook, I'm going to make sure I manage my time well enough so that I can find 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes here, there, so that I can spend time with her. Right now, I really take pride in the fact that I get to do her hair every, every week. And yeah, it takes four hours. But guess what? We're both watching a movie. We both can laugh and joke at the same things. Yes, it's kind of like existing together a little bit, but we're doing the same things. We're, we're, we're right there with each other. We're not focused on each other, but we're focused on the same thing together. So I call that quality time. Now, when we get on the bus and head to school, that's quality time too. Why? Because we talk. We listen to music. We discuss whatever's on her mind, and that makes me happy. That makes her happy. The other day, I happened to catch up with an old childhood friend of mine, and because I hadn't talked to him in a long time, and he seemed like he really needed the conversation, I was on the phone with her throughout the whole bus ride, and this girl sat there and started crying. Why? Because she felt like I was ignoring her, but I wasn't, and she knew that I was holding her hand, she was snuggled up under me, she was sitting with me, but... She still was upset because we weren't listening to music like we usually do. So I already know this girl is super sensitive and any deviation from whatever I've told her we should be doing or any habit that we've formed together, any deviation from that, it really upsets her. It really throws her off. And I'm sure most of that is because she's experienced so much loss in her life already. She's only six and already I've moved her from one side of the earth to the other. She no longer has a stepbrother and sister with her. She's not with her father anymore. I've, I've taken her out of that situation. And while I regret some of those, not some of those decisions, but some aspects of that decision, I know it's the best thing for us both. Now, since then, she's actually lost a great-grandmother and a great-grandfather. She has not lost, but they have moved out of the country uh, my mother has left the country, and so has my brother. So she, she, she understands loss. And right now, that's, it's very heavy on our heart. So, and I don't know if I like went around the whole topic or not, because there's so, so many aspects to this one topic that I feel so strongly about. But I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure that I am aware of whatever it is that she's watching on TV, to make sure that I have a good working knowledge of the friends that she spends the most time with, uh, their characters, what, they're, what they talk about, what they play with, how they play, stuff like that. I, that that's important to me. Um, I feel like once she starts school, because it would be super um, academic heavy, I don't think she, as a primary one student, I don't think she has time for CCAs yet, or she's not eligible for them yet, but I do want her involved in some kind of physical activity so that she can work out any aggression she's built up from class, from being frustrated for lack of understanding or being bullied by kids. I mean, whatever it is, I want to make sure that she has an outlet somewhere. I want to make sure I I encourage her creativity. Right now, she's in that in that zone where she likes to make things. She really is um, a maker space baby. She, um, when I was working for um, for IQ Kids, I developed a curriculum for science and drama. And in my research, I brought home a couple experiments and stuff like that. So she's used to doing things with her hands. She's used to understanding the, you know, she has a working knowledge of moving parts on, on a basic level, obviously, and how, you know, to cut and glue and, and create something um, that she can present as art. So those kinds of aspects, I want to make sure that I continue to encourage because STEAM is important. The science, the technology, the, um, you know, the arts, 
the music, all of that, that's important because it makes her a very well-rounded child. And it means that she can talk to anyone because her, her interests are diverse enough where she can identify with everyone. And that, again, is important to me. That makes her more of a social being. And she is. She is an extrovert. Um, she has introvert tendencies as well, but she's mostly an extrovert when she's warmed up to you. And I don't want her to lose any of that. I don't want her personality to change. Now, something I did learn the hard way is that when we had our maid, our maid happened to be very pessimistic. And some of that was rubbed off on Gaia. And I'm trying really hard to get that worked out of her system a little bit because it's changed her entire demeanor. Where there was once a very playful and energetic and loving child, she tends to complain first now. And I'm trying to let her know that what she's doing is not helping her situation. It's actually creating more of an uncomfortable feeling about the day going forward, and it it only draws more of that negativeness towards her. So as a parent, there are so many things I want to accomplish. Originally, the idea was to homeschool her until she could pass her PSLEs, but looking at the system right now, I don't think I'm equipped to be able to do that by myself. I need her in school. I need her to be able to learn straight from them, and I'll learn right along with her, but I need her to be well-rounded as well. So, yeah, I have a bone to pick with, you know, the the typical parents here in Singapore. I don't even know where I would start, so for right now it's just a rant on a podcast. But I guess I'll have to, you know, lead by example. I As I go along and I see all of these, you know, um, extra tuition classes and gymnastics and music and whatever else, I don't see why there hasn't been a, a parent out there who hasn't figured out that a one-on-one with a teacher is so much more effective than a classroom. I'm waiting for Singapore's government to realize that there are so many tuition classes out there that there is no reason why you can't claim to homeschool your child and just stick them in tuition classes and still have them pass the PSLE. What do you need school for at that point? I don't know. I'm bothered. Can you tell I'm bothered? (laughs) Either way, I know the kind of parent I want to be. And I don't know if I'll fall short or anything. I don't know if I'll fail miserably. I don't know if, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Actually, I do know that. But um, I'm going to try my damnedest. I'm going to see if I can't make sure that she has a great childhood experience. Yeah. I feel good about what I want to do. I'm still a little nervous about how much she has to go through and how much she has to endure, but we'll see how it goes. One day at a time, right? Besides, I only have two more weeks to like really prep her. My goodness. Um, I better go to sleep, you guys. I will catch you tomorrow. Um, all my love. Be optimistic. Help each other out. It's what we were born to do. Yeah? Alright, I'll catch you tomorrow. Y'all take care. Good night.